Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Treasure Hunting Sonic. Today we're going to be talking about the Sonic Monopoly games. There's two different versions of it. There's regular Sonic and Sonic Boom. The regular Sonic came out in 2012 and the Sonic Boom came out in 2015. Both of these have their own unique pieces. They're very fun to play and uh, you guys might have seen on my uh, Instagram stories that I'm, I also collect Monopoly games in addition to Sonic stuff. So when I heard that Sonic was going to have his own Monopoly, I was psyched. That's one of the things I've been wanting for years. And um, they're pretty hard to find now. I, I noticed uh, the price of the, the regular Sonic Monopoly went up to uh, about $100 now. And the Sonic Boom is, you know, hovering up there too. Not quite a hundred, but still hovering up there. And uh, I bought this one when it first came out, full price and everything. Um, it has, I'll show you the back of it. I'm gonna open the boxes and set them all up and get close ups of everything, but just to show you guys the boxes, it tells you the tokens it comes with. Uh, there's pictures of the money, pictures of the character cards. It's got some real nice art of, um, you know, like the, the 3D looking animation of the Sonic characters. Uh, it's got the chow on there, which is pretty cool. And all the, uh, all the properties are based off zones. Uh, you guys will see that closer in, in more detail when I open the box. Here's the back of the Sonic Boom. This one, I mean as well the um, properties are different play different locations from the cartoon from the show and uh, I just found out today that the show was actually nominated for a Teen Choice Award alongside stuff like Rick and Morty um, Family Guy and a couple of uh, Gravity Falls a couple other popular shows like that so for Sonic Boom to be nominated for an award in the same category as those shows I feel like that's a pretty good feat the show's great if you guys haven't watched it I know a lot of people hate on it but the show's great Mike Pollock and everyone do a great job. So let's crack these open, get them set up, and I can show you guys this stuff in good detail. So here you can see the boards all set up. Here's the original Sonic one. And the Sonic Boom one. So let's take a closer look at these. Starting with the regular one, here's the game pieces. You got a Chow, who's backwards there. You got an Amy. You got Tails, you got Knuckles, you got Shadow, and you got Sonic. Classic six pieces. Um, these things are very fragile. If you've ever played some of these more detailed Monopoly games, you probably know. Uh, straight out of the box, my Shadow and Amy both have broken off arms. I heard they're easy to fix, the arms are still in the box, but I haven't attempted. Put them next to the die and you can see about how tall they are. These are made out of pewter, if I recall correctly, which is just a mixture of, uh, Copper and bronze, I think. I could be wrong. Brass? I don't know. Here we have the deed cards for all the properties. That's what the mortgage side looks like. The houses and hotels are just a basic, simple gray and uh, yellow. And also, instead of houses and hotels in this one, they're called workshops and bases. So here's the money. Start down here. A dollar has the chow on it. The five has, chat, has rouge. Probably should have turned these all the same way before I started the video. It's cool that rouge gets a feature on this game. 
She's barely mentioning it at all, but there she is on the money. The 10 has Shadow. The 20 has Amy. The 50 has Knuckles. The 100 has Tails. And the 500 has Sonic. This right here is one of the um, box inserts that holds the stuff in place. Nice little layout of green hills on there. It's nice and detailed. So a closer look at the board. Big picture in the middle of it. Just Sonic Tails and Knuckles. I think they could have added a couple other characters in here. The Nintendo version has pretty much every Nintendo character from all their franchises in the middle. I mean, this is a nice image too, though. And instead of Chance the Community Chest, you got Item Box and Bad Mix. And each of the cards still say, Take no damage from a final boss, collect 200 rings. Clear a challenge at, collect $10, 10 rings. So a lot of them are the same as uh, the classic game, just with you know slight variations. You still get the same amount of money on each card. Still, still get out jail free card. Advance the transportation cards. Advance the nearest team. Okay, so let's get into the board. So let's start at go. So the cheap properties you got Pumpkin Hill and Metal Harbor. That really disappoints me they put Pumpkin Hill so low because I love Pumpkin Hill. I want to see that recreated in uh, Sonic Forces. Instead of attacks, it's uh, Dr. Eggman steals your rings. He's just as bad as the government. For the railroad, instead of uh, trains you have, sorry I should say transportation, instead of trains you have vehicles from the Sonic franchise. You got the Speed Star, the Tornado over there, the Extreme Gear board from Sonic Riders, and the Egg Mobile. Sorry about the glare. You got City Escape, Mystic Mansion, and the Frog Forest, the next three properties. Again, why say you escaped such a cheap property is beyond me. In every version of Monopoly, the four corner pieces are always the same. The classic uh, go, jail, free parking, and go to jail. Continuing gone, you have Seaside Hill, and then there's the first uh, utility, which is the Chaotix. The utilities in this game, which in the original were electric uh, electricity and water, is now Team Chaotix and Team Babylon. So you got Seaside Hill, Speed Highway, and Sky Sanctuary. That's the pinks. Past the tornado, you got Chemical Plant, Green Hill, and Babylon Garden. And honestly, I'm surprised. I thought Green Hill would be the, the boardwalk piece, the most expensive one. On this side, getting into some of the more expensive properties. You have Sand Ruins, Metal City, and Aptos. And then you have the Passing Extreme Gear. You have Sweet Mountain, Empire City, and Halaska. It's also good to see Team Babylon featured. In the most expensive side, you have Tropical Forest, Planet Wisp, and Sylvania Castle. Past the Egg Mobile, and you have the two most expensive, Splash Hill and Mad Gear. Honestly, didn't expect that. Gift expense, pay 100. Try not playing on this face. So that's pretty much it for the classic one. I think this one's very nicely done. Like I said, I think some of the properties could have been changed around. Um, obviously, uh, Green Hill, in my opinion, should have been the most expensive, seeing how much 
they like to remake it. Um, Pumpkin Hill should not have been the least expensive. It just, it hurts me to see that. And I feel like a lot more classic stages could have been featured. As I know a lot of these are Sonic Colors and Sonic um, Unleashed in the six stages. But this was released around in 2012, so it was just after the 20th anniversary, so they were probably trying to get some of the newer stuff in there. So let's move on to Sonic Boom. So starting off with the tokens, you have, these aren't characters, these are actual items. So you got Sticks' as Boomerang. You got Knuckles' as Glove. You got Amy's Hammer. You got Eggman's Mustache. You got Sonic Shoe. And last but not least, you got Tails' Ranch. Pretty basic piece. Here's the property cards, the deeds, I should say. That's what the more inside looks like. Over here, you got the houses and hotels are yellow and blue in this one, except they are called... Huh, I guess they're still called houses and hotels. Strange. Money. You got Eggman on the dollar. Sticks on the five. Knuckles on the ten. Amy on the twenty. So Amy's on the twenty in both of the, the versions. Tails on the fifty. Sonic on the one hundred. And the whole team on the five hundred. That's cool to see. Big $500 piece right there. Here's the board all set up. I really like the detail in this one. It's got a lot of, uh, it's got all five of the main characters on the front. Could have had Eggman somewhere featured. Um, it's very colorful. Like I said, a lot of small details. Instead of um, Chance Community Chest, it's Let's Do This. And Village Chest. So almost the same thing as Community Chest. Let's see what some of the cards say. Advanced to Sonic Shack. Which I think is the boardwalk in this game. Mad Burgers gives you a loyalty reward, click 50. Advance to the Evil Froglodyte Cave. If you pass go, collect 200. Now let's try some village chests. You have won a second prize in a chili dog contest, collect $10. Okay, so like that one in the original one was you won a beauty contest, collect $10. Or second place in a beauty contest. Library fee late fees, pay $50. All right, so let's go ahead and go around the board here. Starting at go, you got Dr. Eggman's garden and Dr. Eggman's lair. Poor Eggman, his properties must be worthless. He may be a genius, but he's not a very smart realtor, is he? Instead of taxes, you have bot attack. And instead of, uh, for transportation, instead of railroads, it's characters. You got Sonic. Tails, Knuckles, and then Sticks and Amy in the same same uh, space. Keep going. You got the Valley, the Beach, and the Jungle. 
past the jail, you got Buddy Buddy Temple, Hot Springs, and Orchard. And then you have UT as one of the utilities. And the other utility is Tails is playing. I guess they didn't have enough um, vehicles in Sonic Boom to make a full on vehicle. <clears throat> you know, set up in this game. Passing Tales, you got Circus of Wonders, Golf Course, and Mine. At Pass Free Parking, you got Toy Factory, Town Hall, and Evil Frog Glodite Cave. I hate that word. Warehouse of Boxes, Library, and Shea Amy. So it looks like the characters' houses are gonna be the most expensive. On the most expensive side, you gotta start out with Mad Burger, Styx's Burrow, Amy's House, Past Knuckles, then you got Tails' Workshop, and Sonic Shack. They're the boardwalk and the park place. Two most expensive ones. And then you got Eggman there trying to steal your money again. Gotta find all his evil evil plans some somehow. A better way than to suck taxes out of all the residents of the community. Kind of sounds like your stereotypical government, doesn't it? Maybe Eggman's based off a real world leader. Inside joke he is. So that was the Sonic Boom one. So what'd you guys think? Have you guys, do you own this? Have you all played it? Which one do you like better? Personally, I like the detail in the Sonic Boom one a lot more. And they had really up the, around um, 2014, they really started up their games on Monopolies. They, uh, the presentation became a lot better, the boxes changed. Um, they just started putting way more detail into them than they used to. And there's a ton of different Monopolies out there. There's over 500. I mean, pretty much every major city in the world has their own Monopoly at this point. Various other video games do as well, like uh, Fallout, Mario has like three different ones, Nintendo, which I already mentioned, Zelda. Uh, in my opinion, there should also be a Sega Monopoly. That would be really cool, in my opinion. Just have like, you know, Jet Set Radio, Shenmue, Virtua Fighter, Knights, all, all that kind of stuff. But let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching.